Welcome again to another Line Upon Line Bible discussion. Um, I'm your host, Andrew, and we're looking at foundation truths from Genesis. Um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 is our focus today as we look at the rest of the chapter, and we're thinking about a perfect companion. Um, the Bible teacher helping us out today is David Williamson from Belfast, and we are going to try to find out more about uh, the Word of God and in that sense, find out more about God, the world around us, and even ourselves as we look into uh, these things together. So please join us, pull up a, a chair, get a coffee, whatever you need to be comfortable, and we'll enjoy a time of, in the Word together. Thank you. Hello, David. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, so um, our discussion will be helpful today. Um, we're looking today at what I've called a perfect companion. So we're in a little section that deals with uh, Eve. Uh, so we're going to read uh, Genesis 2 and 18 together, and we'll look a little bit at the rest of, of Genesis chapter 2 in our discussion. So we'll read Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 uh, together to begin our discussions. Genesis 2 and 18 um, in the New King James reads like this, And the Lord God said, it is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him or suitable. I think some translations have it to him. And then you remember the, the story of um, the formation of Eve, um, the, the search that Adam makes, the, the sleep that the Lord God causes Adam to um, experience. And then at the end of the, the chapter, we have um, a little didactic part, a little teaching part, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So, so it's an interesting ch uh, chapter, as we've been discovering, and David, um, an interesting little section we're going into now as well. Um, yes, I, I'm looking forward to this section. I've, I've enjoyed uh, a little study in this section in the past. So Yeah. So, I mean, just on an initial, initial comment so far, I think we've noticed that um, there are so many, if you like, pillars of our, our whole, um, the way we think about the world that have already been erected through the first chapter or two of, of Genesis. And now we're going to come to another couple here, I suppose, as well. Um, we've, got, we've got the whole idea of, of, of marriage at the end uh, of the chapter. And before then, we've, we've got um, the creation of, of Eve uh, as a companion to Adam. So just looking at, at this verse, 18 David um, the Lord God uh, said it's not good the, that the man should be alone uh, interestingly it's the Lord God still here in this chapter we, we've discussed that before haven't we um, and then it says it's not good for a man to be alone uh, do you think is is that significant that, that it's brought out maybe in the context of, of creation and so on uh, is there a contrast being made, do you think, with, with chapter one and everything being very good? Or, or is that in that context yeah. that there is something that's so, I feel like, not complete? Or Yeah, I, th I think that the main idea, really, you're, you're bringing that, that out there with it, the, the good uh, kind of motif, really, is that of completeness. Um, okay. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, in chapter one, as, as day follows day, in, in chapter one, as the work of the day is completed, then we read God saw that it was good. Yeah. Um, and then it's the sixth day when he says it, it, it's very good and good. And the work of creation is, is fully complete mm -hmm. it, here. Uh, it, as you, you've noted, God says that there is something not good. And um, that that's a reminder just by the way, that whatever your view of the relationship between chapter one and chapter two of Genesis, uh, we're not simply following on chronologically from the end of chapter one mm -hmm. into chapter two. Uh, so this, this this second creation account, as it's called, is 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 taking up the events of day six mm -hmm. 
and it's expanding upon those events yeah, and it's yeah. filling in the details. And this is quite a common uh, way of of writing. Right. Um, right. You know, we, we don't maybe often write like that, but that would be quite common in, in scriptural terms. We have that in different passages of scripture. So, so the point here, I take it, is that God sees that there's an incompleteness to creation when right. the man is alone and without a companion it's not that there's an imperfection in the sense that there's something sinful or wrong yes just that there's an incompleteness so the point you're making there is just for my clarifying it for myself is we we haven't reached the point of everything being very good yet is that what you're that's it that's it yeah uh so, so, so it's, it's the not very like, end of it you know there's so this thing is uh, is even in the even in the fact that everything's very good there's this bad thing that's not the thought uh, because it's not it's not thinking of something that's wrong um is it, there's no like moral imperfection in that sense anything yeah, yeah. like that it's yeah, more yeah. the thought of something that's not yet brought to its creation is that yeah there's a lack there's a lack yeah. in creation as opposed yeah. to yeah a, a, anything wrong in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's helpful and, yeah and i think it's important just to see as well that it's god here who mm. sees the need okay. and uh yeah. provides the solution he says you know i'll, I'll make him a, a helper and uh, I mean, what we're going to see as we go down, I mean, maybe don't want to touch it too much now, but that the planner in all of this is God. And that has mm -hmm. an importance when we think later about whether marriage is a human institution or just a you know, cultural ordinance, because it is God who sees the need and it's God who supplies for the need. And that, that means that this whole plan has come from God and we're not at liberty really to, to yeah. amend it or redefine it in any ways. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so cultural trends to, to, to sort of um, downplay the significance of, 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 of marriage and, and so on, or, or to adjust it and amend it to what's palatable to people, you know, that, that would be, that's if it's, if it's out with the, the principles laid down in in this chapter then it's it's just moving away from god's pattern in that sense i was thinking about this recently um how often in genesis the pattern has been moved away from i mean as you start going through genesis you know you come to chapter uh four and we have lamach with his two wives mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting, and then he writes a song about it. <laughs> I was thinking that you know that immediately the culture is pushing something that's different than God's pattern. And, and, did, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and as you go in, you find out by chapter sixteen. Well, the culture has even affected a godly man. You know, so you've got Abraham, and he, he takes Hagar, um, and and you go through the rest of Genesis actually, and again and again we're coming across like things that are you know, movement a movement away from the, 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 the pattern that's there, but the pattern remains. And so the Lord in the New Testament calls it back to that pattern, doesn't he? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I suppose the big question is with a verse like this, and we've all heard it quoted at marriage ceremonies and, and, and everything like that. Um, you know, it's not good for a man to be alone uh, and how God moved, um, you know, there's a beautiful pattern here, but, is it always true? Um, can um, is he saying that everybody, you know, is there the one out there for everybody to use that sort of, um, I don't know, romantic vernacular of of I was about to say Hollywood, but Hollywood would maybe say that now, but I don't know Disney or something. Um, is it always true? Can people not be content in, in their own and a single pe persons? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that that's that's uh, very important really to draw out because in the New Testament, as you know, the Lord talks about people, it's Matthew 19, isn't it, where uh, yeah. there, there's some people who don't need uh, marriage or don't enter into marriage for one reason or another. And uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, he talks about people who have no need of, of marriage um, and so we, we learn then that that marriage isn't necessary for everyone and and for some people um, they feel perfectly content without um, that life companion 
uh, that that uh, a spouse would be. Um, and in fact, it gives some people tremendous freedom to serve the Lord uh, yeah, in different yeah. ways. And there's 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 there's, yeah. there's positives to that. But I think an important point to note here is that when the Lord says it's not good for a man to be alone, that remains true in in the sense that we all still need companionship. For for example, we, we are social creatures. Okay. And uh, when we come into the New Testament, even when it comes to fellowship among believers, all of that is is a, yeah. an essential reality for okay. for Christians. So it isn't good for a person to be isolated and alone. And uh, some obtain a, a wonderful companion within the institution of marriage, uh, a, a spouse. Yeah. But everyone has been supplied with the possibility of companionship through the fact that God instituted marriage at the beginning. That is, that he instituted the means by which uh, the human race would flourish and there would be procreation and there would be yeah. uh, more people and so on. Uh, so, so marriage really here is the first building block really in the foundation of society. In, okay. in God's yeah. purpose. So I think all that that's important just to, to see. Yeah, I think that I think that's a, a beautiful and helpful thing to be brought out. So um for instance, on, on the whole point of um whether or not marriage is for everyone, I think very clearly scripture, as you say, says marriage is not for everyone. You know, the uh, first Corinthians it mentions that some have that gift and some don't have that gift, you know? And, and so there's that sense in which, you know, in, in the big scheme of things more end up married than, than not. But um, um, I, 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 th I think it's helpful to look at this, as you say, more generally and, and say, well, okay, it was through the woman. It was through Eve that she's the mother of all living there are all different people in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, as you say, it's, it, it created the environment even, even for single people to flourish in, in, in a social sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. And, and, and in a relational sense, Yeah, you know, we're, we're not, we're not meant to isolate ourselves. I think it's one of the proverbs doesn't it? It brings that out, you know, the, the danger of isolation and, and of sort of going along in a, in a trajectory away from everybody and away from society. Um, so it's, it's not good for the man to be alone. Can it can have that connotation perhaps as well. Is that, is that what you're. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's helpful. Okay. So um, it's not good for a man to be alone. Uh, the man to be alone. Um, I will make him a helper comparable to him or helper suitable uh, uh, to him. Um, have you any thoughts on, on that wee bit? Um, helper suitable to him, answerable yeah, to him? Well, I, yeah, and I mean, I quite like the New King James rendering of it, uh, you know, a, a helper uh, comparable or comparable to him because as we go down the passage, as you know, we'll see that, um, you know, when, when Adam's naming the animals and so on, that there isn't found one that yeah. is comparable to him. Yeah. And the idea really is that they're not at his level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so there, there's a sense of equality in it. Um, you know, there's, there's one who stands face to face with yeah. the man in that sense, answering to mm -hmm. uh, the man. Uh, so there's a level of companionship here, which is what is being, uh, I think, uh, mm -hmm. introduced in, in the word that the helper suitable to him uh, or fitted for him. So this we this we sort of scenario that's developed here um, of uh, Adam needing, uh, you know, Eve and so on and and. The fact that Adam's formed first, and then Eve, and then uh, the fact that he, she comes from his rib or his side, mankind comes through the woman. All this kind of interdependence that we have here is, is mm -hmm. something that's picked up on in the New Testament, First Corinthians eleven, yeah, and and also in relation to church order, I think, in First First Timothy two, yeah, you know, um, as well. I I find that 
significant. I don't know if there's anything you want to add, add at this point about that. Um, I just I find it significant that Paul, uh, at least on two occasions, I think more than two occasions, he he goes back right to this these incidents and and draws um, a teaching point, if you like, out yeah. of it that is significant in you know the first century um, culture. Um, yeah, well, it, it certainly shows that there's relevance to this. It's not just a story relegated to, you know, the beginning of the Bible and, mm-hmm. and not to be thought about. There are no principles to be drawn from it because um, I think what Paul seems to do in those passages, just as he, he recognizes here that, you know, Adam has a role to fulfill in creation and we see that further on you know uh, prior to this in the passage mainly and then when he goes on to to name the animals and so on yeah um and then god provides the woman and the woman also has a role yeah. to fulfill um so adam has to do this his work in creation and this uh, the woman is provided as a help mm-hmm. for adam and maybe just to say we, we've already talked about that thing of being comparable to uh, even in the word helper mm-hmm. here there, there's no sense of indignity or lack of value uh to the woman uh, it's quite often brought out by commentators in this passage that that expression helper is most often applied to god himself in the old testament so like it's, the Lord is my helper Thank yes you. absolutely yeah so so but the point that Paul brings out is that Eve was created for Adam Uh and uh, not the other way around. And uh, read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're probably not going to get into the the nitty gritty of of that. But what what is plain to see there is that Paul sees an order of headship. Yeah, clearly. Reflected in this fact. And he just desires that that order is accepted and demonstrated. Yeah, in, in in church gatherings, and and that's the same in First Timothy chapter two. Yeah, uh, so there's just an order here, um, and that order should be seen um, and yeah, demonstrated good. among local churches. That's yeah, that, thank you. Uh, I find that helpful. Just and, and the fact that he puts so much weight on it, I think, is significant. Really, and, and the Lord does the same. Uh, yeah. And so I think. Of all chapters in the Bible, these early chapters in Genesis need to be thoroughly understood because the rest of Scripture very much flows out of them. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, after this, there's this interesting little um, scene where the animals are named. And I mean, you just look at it, and and one of the commentators I was reading was pointing out that often the Lord, when he's teaching in, in, in Genesis, there's a sense of show and tell. You know, sometimes he's telling us something directly, like we come to the end of the passage, you know, this is what we learn from, you know, uh, a man shall leave his father and mother and so on. Um, but 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 there's something that's been just demonstrated, shown by, by a little scene that 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 um, plays out. Um, and, and here's a little scene uh, where the animals are named and yet Adam's search for a companion is appears fruitless. Uh, what, what do you think God is showing us from this little narrative? Um, well, I, I, the the way the way I take right, it, it, it's God who causes this to happen here yeah. because the um, it tells us that um, He brought them unto Adam to see what He would call them, and uh, so. So I take it that it's still God working in the background, and I'm not even sure. Just like maybe you'll have a slightly different view here, but um, I'm not even sure if Adam's aware of his own need at this point. Mm. Um, you know, he he might have felt uh, you know, an an a certain amount of lack. Okay, just at this point, but but what happens is the the animals are brought for him to name. Mm. But what will be immediately evident to Adam <laughs> is that they come before him with their companions, you know, um, the, okay. the male and the female, the male and the female, the male and the female, you know, oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's no companion found for him. And this seems to be placed here in the, just the, the shape of, of, of the passage to show that God is emphasizing that 
he to meet Adam's need for companionship, mm-hmm. there would have to be a special creation. Um, so, yeah. so that um, there's no, there's no not found among all of these, no matter how beautiful or strong or whatever it yeah. might, yeah. you know, uh, great we might see, uh, we might find these animals to be. There's none that's the equal to man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, none could meet man at his own level uh, and be a helper suited to them. And so that, that I think, is the, that's why it's brought in here, just to show that what is needed for man is a special creation, the special creation of the woman. I think, I think that's really, you know, it's really uh, interesting, this whole subject of naming and so on. Well, maybe not, again, for the sake of time, get into it. But um, I take it there's more to it than simply, you know, <laughs> my little daughter hope um you know she's got her little animals and stuff and you know she decides to name them um i think the basic principles are the reason why people want to name things don't get me wrong but but i, th- I think you know often and the name reflects a character there's a sense of of of, of study yep. you know I, I, he's studying the nature and character i take it of these animals yep. And giving an appropriateness, there's an appropriateness to it, and so yeah. you get that expression name throughout the whole testament and new testament. It has more of a con. It just it's not just a label. This is not just a labeling exercise in that sense. Here it's not. Um, well, I, I take it anyway. Um, yeah, and and I think you know he's he's saying something about the essential nature of the animals, and 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 then you know his name would correspond to that. Um, in some way, I take it. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, names are very important in Scripture because yeah. in some sense they, they are intended to represent the, whatever the, the being or the person yeah. or the thing is yeah. itself uh, in, in a way. So, yeah. Yeah. I just thought I would mention that in passing. Um, yeah. So then there's a sleep. Um, Adam is put to sleep and the, you know, one rib taken and so on and, and the rib which the lord god had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man and adam said this is now bone of my bone so he, he obviously by this point there's been that building up of of um some form of need or want or or that's maybe not the right word a sense of lack mm-hmm. um and, and now he sees one that comparable to him yeah um yeah so, there is symbolism around this. Can you help us with that at all? Or? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I I, I, I like the, the you know the thing of the deep deep sleep because it's mentioned a couple of times in uh-huh. Genesis. This idea of a deep sleep here with Adam, and then in chapter fifteen with Abraham. Yeah, yeah. And um, and the lesson really in both sections is that the man is inactive, uh-huh. in some sense, while God is <coughs> is active. God is working. So in chapter 15, Abraham sleeps and God uh, commits to the covenant. Yeah. Um, and he's going to be the party who's going to ensure its fulfillment. So it's, yeah. it's him and him alone. Um, and here Adam sleeps and God provides this partner. And the emphasis here seems to be that Adam didn't choose this partner. Um, God provided mm-hmm. this and this was... This was all of God's doing. Now, you know, we need to maybe be careful. We don't run too far with that. That, you know, uh, there's no thought here that a man doesn't choose his wife. That, that, that's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is that God chose that a man's partner would be this special creation. Yeah, yeah. And this special creation is a woman, uh-huh. not an animal. Uh, obviously not yeah. another man in the context or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so uh, there's a sense in which man yeah. has been shut out entirely. This is this is God's institution. Um, he's the one who plans it. He's the one who chooses the partners in it. And for the man, the partner is the special creation of the woman. The man has nothing to do with deciding uh, the, the form that that partner will take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's really helpful. Uh, you know, there's this um, exclamation from Adam: "This is now bone of my bones." It's a recognition, flesh, yeah. yeah. Flesh of my flesh, and she she shall be called woman because she is taken out of man. 
there's a sense in which, yeah, he, he immediately recognized this is you can imagine that after after sort of all the all the study of the the animal kingdom, if you like, and and, and then all of a sudden, you know, um, there's there's a recognition of of um, compatibility. Yeah, and deep, more deep, than that, deepening a deepening awareness of his own aloneness or something, you know, yeah. in, in comparison, you know, everything else has its companion through these other through, yeah. through these, but but he's alone. Yeah. And now, now at last, yeah. as you said, you know, yeah. that this is the one. Yeah. 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 I think, I think it's really, it. really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And there's a sense to, and not only do we get a sense from this of, of what, if you're using technical speak of, ontological equality uh, in the sense of bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh mm -hmm. how could yeah. you ever think of a woman as inferior to a man that's not the language of inferiority Absolutely. that's the language yeah. of, uh, of equality um and that that's brought out um she shall be called woman because she's taken out of the man um and then it's in in light of that we have verse 20 25 and, and or 24 and 25 therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and so it, it, it's it's um this idea this idea of marriage is god's idea <laughs> just simply is mm -hmm. the first thing we notice from you know this has been taken right out of uh god's handbook for mankind if you like um this is not just not some this is something that has divine authority behind it and, and i suppose that is why it is so under attack at so many levels the, this pattern of marriage um you know um, and and even um even more generally we've talked a little bit about you know some distinctions that there are some differences between the sexes um how women differ from differ from men and so on um we maybe haven't touched too much upon the rule distinctions, but we've noted them. We've noted them in First Corinthians eleven and um, First Timothy two. Um, I don't know. Do you want to expand on that at all? Um, or um, move into well, just just I mean, it not not really, you know, because it would take a bit of time to do it. But yeah. but what what um, is clear, I think, both in chapter one and here, is that there are distinctions. Um, you know, God made them chapter one, you know, male and female created he them. Yeah. And by that very statement, he's, he's showing that there is a distinctiveness. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then here we have um, Adam, God creates him, puts him in the garden, gives him certain responsibilities there. And then the woman is created and immediately we see that the, the main focus of her um, attention is upon Adam. Um, just as the, the helper to, to Adam. So there just there are suggestive differences which we see then expanded yeah. um, and you know more maybe more clearly uh, seen throughout the, the, yeah. the remainder of scripture. But yeah, the suggestions yeah. there certainly. So I suppose our culture is very much in making equality sameness, you know, so um, <clears throat> everything is seen as you know well if if the men do it the women can do it if the women do it you know yeah, there, there's a kind of sense in which everything has mm -hmm. to be together mm -hmm. everything has to be mixed together uh, and yet the distinctiveness um is part of the beauty in god's in, in god's creation um um I, I think this comes out again and again in the new testament as paul lifts these principles from the first um the first chapters of the bible and and, and he'll you know He'll mention certain things about how you know how a wife should um, interact with her husband, how a husband should interact with his wife, and he makes distinctions in that. Yeah. Um, and so we should, as Christians, we shouldn't shy away from those distinctions. We should embrace them, um, absolutely. You know, and and enjoy them as God has placed them, and not think that in any way that that's reflecting negatively upon either male or female uh, yeah. because because god has created them equal you know that is i think extremely clear from yeah. the passages yeah. If, yeah. if we're allowing the scriptures to speak at all that that, that is very clear that at, at a be level of being and existence they're they're you know um completely equal um absolutely 
So this first marriage is seen as sort of prototypical, isn't it? And in many ways, you know, you, you see Adam, uh, Eve being brought to, to the man and so on. Um, uh, and really something we can draw lessons from, you know. Um, however, I mean, it was in a world prior to the fall and, and obviously some many things will come up from chapter three onwards that weren't in God's plan, if you like. Um, um, it is the foundation of human flourishing. I think chapter one, you know, male and female, and then it mentions about going out and populating the world. Um, is there anything else you want to take out of these, like these, these, these verses at the end? Well, yeah, th- I think these verses, they appear really to be Moses footnote really to the narrative yeah, yeah, that yeah. precedes. So he, he's giving a lesson after presenting the, the facts um yeah and you know you, you said that, that this this first marriage then has permanent importance mm-hmm. as far as the institution of marriage and the practice of marriage is concerned because there are obviously unique features about this marriage um as for example even when we come to these couple of verses you know adam didn't have a father and mother to leave so, so yeah, yeah. There, there, there are unique features about that yeah. first marriage, but there are also features which, as we go through the Bible, we discover should be common mm-hmm. to all marriages. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think, again, that's something not to, to, to shy away from. We see that with the, the, the Lord himself, you know, um, from the beginning. It mm-hmm. was not so. And, you know, yeah. th- this, this important recognition that this pattern here has relevance yeah so a man, man is to leave and cleave is the way the king james version puts yeah. it or, or to leave and to be joined to his wife and yeah. those words are, are strong mm-hmm. uh words he's to forsake his father and mother mm-hmm. and he's to cling to mm-hmm. uh, or be glued to his his wife and i mean of course that we point to make there is that that's not saying that the man has no further responsibility to his parents. No, that's true. It's not saying he shouldn't care for them or he shouldn't visit them or, or, or that type of thing. But it is saying really clearly that he has left their sphere of authority. Mm-hmm. And he's now in a new relationship in which he has become the head. And, you know, just at a practical kind of pastoral level for uh, marriage it's important to embrace that reality Mm -hmm. and to do so wholeheartedly marriages can be and have been destroyed uh, through husbands who not recognizing and taking up this responsibility and recognizing this new reality that Mm -hmm. that they've been brought into and uh, so there's that there's that part of it and then it says they shall become one flesh and of course the lord gives the best commentary on that when he says what therefore god has joined together let not man separate so so the man has his responsibility he leaves and cleaves he enters into this new covenant yeah. um and those words leaving and cleaving have covenant relevance yeah yeah uh, throughout scripture so 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 there is in the background here the idea of a covenant being entered into and then God makes the two into one flesh. And, and of course, what the Lord is saying here is that God intends that to, to be, be a permanent union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, marriage. Like something you over. Yeah, like the, 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 the common, if you like, wedding vows and so on, and, and, and the statements that are made, uh, how significant they are. I mean, they've been honed down to something. A lot of the things, I mean, some of them obviously are, are pliable, but you know things like you know this shouldn't be entered into lightly, or mm-hmm. you know well I mean once you start to think of the fact that I I, I have to become the provider for my wife, mm-hmm. uh, I have to be the leader, spiritual leader, and that you know mm-hmm. you know all of a sudden that it has you know if I am immature, if I am undeveloped, you know I'm maybe not ready for that yet. You know, and, and and so there's a sense in which it should be our desire if we're young to be ready for to be, you know, to be ready to embrace that 
uh, if the Lord has it for us. Um, so so I, th- I think that's, and there's a sense in which, because of the way, I, I think another thing maybe, um, and I know we don't, we'll, we'll have to leave it shortly, but we, we live in a world where everything is pitched as a competition. Mm-hmm. Everything between male and female is pitched as a competition. And yet essentially marriage is non-competitive. You know, it's not, I don't mean you can't play board games, but uh, I think there's a sense in which here it's, you know, it's not about cutting out, you're carving out your corner. In so a, you're meant to be complimenting one you're another. Complimenting, it's, it's, it's a constructive, uh, complementary relationship that's, you know, um, it's a companionship. It's all these things. But, but the idea of, you know, I'll, I'll take my piece, you know, and, and we'll work it out by sort of some kind of, ongoing confrontation um, is really not, you know, not what you have as a pattern in scripture. And, and I think that's implied by the rules that they're given. Um, yeah. And, and I yeah. think, I mean, it would take a while to expand upon those and then you just, yeah, it, it would be a good thing to do, you know, it would be a good yeah. thing to do, but, yeah. you know, but I, I think, you know, one, one of the, I mean, just, just saying this generally, but, but we look around us as Christians and are maybe really surprised with, the way marriage is has become viewed in yeah. in the world and you know the whole thought of on honoring the pattern that god has given um mm-hmm. to us i take it that maybe the best way that we can do that now is personally to adhere to it yeah um you know and, and to do so so that people see that it's not yeah. only right but it's best beautifying the gospel it's beautiful yeah and that exactly you know so so we we personally adhere to it and then you know we positively promote um what god's ideal is and um you know many people who despise marriage in the world or or who constantly challenge it i mean obviously you know that there's just the, the, the sinful heart that rebels against yeah, divine institutions. Yeah. But as well as that, some have never seen it lived out. That is true. And the only thing they know for, of, of a marriage is, is, is quite negative often. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so it's important then for us to speak positively about it and to, to show by the way we live and, and our marriages that it's not only right, but it's the best way. Yeah, for, for for human flourishing and well, so on. You, so. you go along, you see a beautiful garden, and and you know that the person has adhered to certain principles to get the garden to where it is. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you see a wreck of a garden. The people in the car, you know, obviously don't appreciate gardens the same way as a person that has put that time and effort into it. Uh, but the point is, the person who walks past on the street can soon discern which understands the principle of gardening better. And there's a sense in which, you know, if by the grace of God, we are, we are enabled to have some, some form of, of marriage that mm-hmm. is honoring to God and beautifying of the gospel, and, and <clears throat> that will be exhibited to people around us. And, and they'll see, well, whatever they're doing, it's, it, it works and it's yeah. right. It's, that's where you're going with it? Yeah, abs- absolutely. absolutely. Um, yeah, so our society in that sense has, has broken down lots of these distinctions. It's denied marriage. It's it's changed what, you know, changed what they say marriage is. Um, uh, it's, you know, done all these things. Um, but I think you mentioned the best way for us to respond is to live out the, the reality of that. Um yeah, an honor God pattern for today. Is there anything else you want to add then, uh, David? But it's been good. I've enjoyed it. I, I, um, no, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm content with that, Andrew. Um, the, the New Testament, of course, for those who are, uh, studying this passage, just to then trace each of these thoughts through the New Testament was really, it would only deepen and strengthen, you know, the, the anything that has been said already. <laughs> absolutely absolutely well thank you david and thank you for taking us through the rest of chapter two it's great really to be good. with you again bro yeah uh, take care now thanks Dave. Uh, bye-bye no, 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 no.